All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So I've got a couple interesting stories for you guys today. Um, the first story, unfortunately, is about Hadi Japan, um, who was recently denied his U.S. visa to come compete at the Olympia. So interestingly enough, um, this story was actually picked up by the New York Post, which is a relatively um, more mainstream uh, publication. Which is very evident by the way they phrase the article. I mean, they start the article out by saying, one of the strongest men alive may prove no match for U.S. citizenship and immigration services, which is an interesting little tagline. But, you know, the typical mainstream approach to bodybuilders is to refer to them as strong men, which is inaccurate. So as you guys know, Hadi did qualify to compete at the 2019 Mr. Olympia. Um, and one of the biggest things that was up for debate was whether or not Hadi was going to compete in 212 or men's open if he was in fact able to make it to the Olympia, which would have made the Olympia more interesting. It would have been nice to see Hadi possibly compete um, in either of those two divisions. And it would make the Olympia more exciting um, because this year we're definitely lacking some of the excitement that we've had in years past. So having a guy like Hadi be kind of a wild card this year would have been cool to see. So I wanted to point out that reading this article, even though the tagline is that Hadi has been denied his visa, implying that this year he will not be able to compete at the Olympia, if you actually read the article, there's nothing in the article that says he was denied this year. It talks about the fact he was denied last year. Um, it talks about his nationality. It talks about his past struggles with immigration. But if you actually go to the bottom of the article here, um, it actually says that the reps for U.S. citizenship and immigration services declined to comment on Hadi Japan's situation. Um, it also goes on to talk about how the Mr. Olympia and American Media Inc. are working um, to get Hadi to the Olympia. So even though everybody is talking about this tagline of this article that Hadi has been denied his visa, um, I really don't see any new information in this article about this year's Mr. Olympia and the fact that his visa has been denied this year. I don't see it anywhere in the article. Now, it does say in the very first paragraph Hadi Japan, a 31-year-old bodybuilder from Iran, has been blowing away competitors across the world, but will be unable to participate in the Mr. Olympia competition in Las Vegas because he hasn't been able to get a visa approval from the agency, which we already, we already know that so far he hasn't been able to. This article doesn't actually say that they have any information you know, knowing that it was denied recently. Um, so I don't know if this article is kind of a misinterpretation of what's going on. That first paragraph is really the only indicator that Hadi won't be able to compete at the Olympia, but they don't say how they know that because they say that the Department of Immigration did not comment on this. They say that Hadi Japan and his representatives, um, they reached out to them and there was no comment from them. So I'm not seeing where the new information is coming from in this article. So even though while at this point it seems extremely unlikely that we'll see Hadi Japan at the Olympia in 2019, I, I would say, you know, not to lose hope because I still would really like to see that happen. Um, and I would say, you know, I don't think it's completely over yet as far as Hadi being able to get that visa. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today is that this weekend marks the six week out mark from the 2019 Mr. Olympia. Um, and now that we are six weeks out, we got an update from Brandon Curry, a most muscular update at six weeks out. Of course, just like every other update that Brandon has posted, um, he looks incredible. And like I said, and many, many times, I think Brandon is going to be one of the top threats at this year's Olympia as far as the top three is concerned. Um, and based on the progress pictures we've been seeing so far, um, I have yet to have changed my mind about that opinion. I think Brandon is incredibly dangerous. I think he's made many of the improvements that a lot of people said he should make. Um, I think 2018, 2019 has been some of the best years of Brandon's career. Um, it's the best he's looked, I think, at any point in his career. We've made this point before, but I think the Olympia is wide open this year. We know for a fact there will be a new Mr. Olympia this year. Top six is wide open, um, and I think Brandon Curry is going to do some serious damage this year at the Olympia. Um, and my prediction at this point is still, I think Brandon Curry is probably the favorite to win the 2019 Mr. Olympia, and I wish him the best of luck in doing so. Um, I think Brandon, you know, I've had nothing but positive experiences with Brandon. I met him at the Arnold Classic right before he won this year, um, and he had some positive things to say to me. He said he actually watched my channel. He just seems like a very humble guy, family guy, just overall nice guy that I've never heard a negative word about Brandon Curry, um, and obviously an incredible physique to go alongside with that. So I don't think anybody would be complaining if we saw Brandon Curry win the 2019 Mr. Olympia. I think he would be a great ambassador for the sport, which I think is something um, the sport really, really needs right now pretty desperately. 
there's been a lot of negative stories, a lot of bad publicity in bodybuilding. Um, and I think a really feel good story would be for an underdog like Brandon, um, who just a couple of years ago was talking about, you know, either switching to 212 or even retiring from bodybuilding um, to now he's really on top of the world as far as bodybuilding is concerned. So I think it would be a really feel good story um, for everybody if Brandon won the 2019 Mr. Olympia. So I'm rooting for Brandon for sure. And hey, you never know, you might still be able to see Brandon um, in Hottie Japan on that Olympia stage. You never know, anything could happen. So the next story that I have for you guys today, I think is a really, really cool story. We've talked about this guy on our channel before um, and the amazing transformation he's been making over the past year. Um, that is Terry Hollins, who is a strongman, a professional strongman competitor. Um, he's competed at the World's Strongest Man several times. In fact, he placed top three, placing third at both the 2011 and 2007 World's Strongest Man competition. So twice, he was the third strongest man in the world. So he is a very accomplished um, and really a very good strongman competitor. And over the past year, we've been seeing Terry make tr you know tremendous changes to his physique. And the reason for that is because he was prepping for his first ever bodybuilding show. Um, so he did a bodybuilding show over there in the UK where apparently he competed in several different categories, got second place in two of those categories, um, and also competed in novice because it was his first bodybuilding show, and he won the novice category. Um, and based on the photos that I've seen, he looks phenomenal, especially for a transformation coming from a strongman background. You know, in many cases, strongmen, particularly top guys at the world's strongest man, carry a lot of body fat. And the reason being is because the idea or the general train of thought has been, you know, the heavier you are and the more you weigh, the more weight you're going to be able to move and the stronger you're going to be. So typically you don't see a world's strongest man competitor, especially not a top three guy uh, with a bodybuilder like physique. And the fact that many of these guys are much taller guys because they compete in strongman. Strongmen just tend to be, you know, well over six foot tall. I believe Terry is somewhere around six foot six, six foot seven. And at his biggest was weighing around 400 pounds. And we've seen that in the before and after pictures. And I think he looked fantastic here, all things considered. His conditioning was very good. He looked like a bodybuilder and not just like a strongman. So I wanted to you know, give a shout out to Terry in this video. And Terry actually reached out to me uh, via direct message after the first video that I had made about Terry's transformation. He said he saw the video, he liked it. Um, and ever since then, he had been watching the other videos that I made. And he said he really enjoyed them. So I really appreciated that message. It meant a lot to me. So uh, uh, congratulations, Terry, on the second place and the win. And I hope you decide to continue your bodybuilding journey. I think it's going to be cool to see what else you're going to be able to do in the future. All right. So finally, in this video, I wanted to do one more recap of the Tampa Pro. For those of you guys that didn't see the video I posted yesterday, um, because at that point, all we had was Instagram videos. But now, um, finally, the HD photos and videos have been posted and we can get a much better look at how these competitors actually looked at this show. Um, in particular, I want to focus on Dexter Jackson and Luke Sando here, who were one and two at this show, and they actually had a call out, just the two of them. And that's one of the main things I talked about in my last video is for Luke, um, you know, I don't think anybody expected Luke to actually beat Dexter at this show. I don't think Luke even went into this show, you know, going into it thinking he was going to beat Dexter. But I think the best case scenario for Luke at this show was, in fact, to get a call out, just him and Dexter, for the judges to say, you and Dexter are so close. We want to compare the two of you. I mean, Dexter Jackson is a living legend. This is his 29th professional win. This is the 29th different show that he's won um, during his professional career. He's a former Mr. Olympia winner. He's been a top threat to the Olympia title for the past couple decades, really. So for you know a relative newcomer like Luke Sando, who's had a tremendous year this past year, to get a call out like this with Dexter, I think is a huge deal for Luke. You know whether or not he won, I think is it, it doesn't really matter. Just the fact that he got that call out with Dexter, I think is extremely important. And I think one of the things that I saw a lot of people focusing on in the comment section um, when comparing Dexter and Luke was a lot of people noticed some distension in Dexter Jackson's midsection. Um, and that's one of the things that I noticed when I was watching the prejudging video. And that's one of the things I was referring to um, as far as Dexter's conditioning. It seemed like he was having a little bit of trouble controlling his midsection. Whereas Luke, who one of the advantages that he had over Dexter was a tremendous amount of size. And Luke having that size advantage um, really was able to control his midsection quite well, hitting a vacuum pose with the front double bicep, um, which is one of the poses where a lot of people noticed that Dexter's midsection was slipping. So I think a lot of people were really noticing a lot of the very, very positive attributes that Luke has to his physique um, as far as having that super small waist, the abdominal control, um, and then having a lot of size over a guy like Dexter, who, like I said, is a legend in the sport. 
So I think that call out was a very, very good thing for Luke. And I think to have actually beaten Dexter, Luke would have had to have that crazy size, but he would also have had to been a world beater um, in terms of conditioning. He would have had to have you know some of the most insane conditioning in the world to beat Dexter Jackson. Uh, because Dexter, even though he's not the biggest guy, he has those full round muscle bellies, that 3D look to his physique. I talked about this in my last video. Um, and obviously, insane proportions. And these are attributes that are going to beat a bigger guy like Luke Sando nine times out of ten. And then rounding out the top six, you had Ian Vier, a, a very, very good Ian Vier in third place. You had Lucas Osladil in fourth, Hassan Mustafa in fifth, and Milan Sadek in sixth place. Now, I also wanted to touch on the classic physique division here because Logan Franklin, um, who is a friend of mine, made his classic physique debut at this show. He's been a top men's physique guy for several years. Um, and he finally made his classic physique debut, and he's posting a lot of progress pictures going into this show where he looked fantastic. He does have a very, very classic physique. Um, and I thought he was going to win this show, to be honest with you guys, based on the pictures that I was seeing going into this show. Um, but from what I've seen in the videos, I think the reason he placed where he did um, was he seemed to fade a little bit during the posing. Now, he did take third here in a very deep lineup, actually. There was over 16 competitors here, I believe. Um, and he took third out of 16 at his Classic Physique debut at a pro show, which I th it's still a very respectable finish. Um, I think he has nothing to be ashamed of there. But I actually talked to him, you know, between pre-judging and the finals. And he was saying he was, you know, dealing with some things backstage as far as anxiety um, and things of that nature. So that could have contributed to why he faded um, the way he did. But I still think Logan looked fantastic. And I still think he deserves, you know, huge congratulations for taking top three uh, at a show like this at his pro debut in classic physique. And I still think we're going to see big things from Logan in the future in this division because I do think he has the structure for it. And I wish him the best, you know, in all of his future endeavors. So that wraps it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed already. There's going to be many more updates on the Mr. Olympia coming up. Um, so make sure you subscribe and don't miss those updates. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.